Hey guys, welcome back. Josh with another video. Um, this one on the antique CDV 700 Geiger counter I just got. Um, this guy is the Victorine 6A model. Um, as you can see here. And this is um, a Geiger counter that was manufactured um, during the Cold War as part of like a civilian readiness program and also for like first responders and stuff. But um, this guy is, you know, one of the pretty iconic models that you see a lot in film and, you know, hear about a lot. Um, a lot of props are in movies and stuff are designed around these. But anyway, um, yeah, so I got this guy for 40 bucks from a local kind of like pawn shop, not sort of place, um, like, they just get secondhand stuff and resell it, and yeah, we're selling this for forty bucks. Um, one in this condition is normally closer to hundred, one hundred and twenty. So I definitely scored there. Um, and it also has the original manual, which is pretty cool. Um, circuit diagrams, the whole nine yards. Um, you know, all the in good information you'd expect. Uh, but anyway, so I'm just gonna kind of go over a few of this guy's parts and his operation. Um, so. You've obviously, looking at the front of it, got your meter face. And it's got two scales, millirunctions per hour or counts per minute. And you can see that the scale goes like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, and it's not exactly a linear scale, which is interesting. Um, and you've got your power and um, range knob here that picks the uh, range that this is going to run at. You've of course got your probe. Um, this is a nickel plated brass probe, um, which is, as another YouTube commenter mentioned on uh, another similar probe that I hacked to work with my modern Ludlum Model 3. Um, as the commenter mentioned, um, the nickel plated brass is actually um, helps energy compensate the gammas coming into the tube. So fewer of certain kinds of gammas and more of certain energy levels of gammas register when they hit the tube to try and like um, flatten out the gamma response curve. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, as with the other probe I demoed, which is also from a 6A, this one's kind of hard to rotate. Um, it has a rotating beta shield. Here, I'm gonna pause it real quick and open that guy up. Okay, finally got it. Um, so yeah, it's got a Geiger Mueller tube in the middle here. This is a different one than the uh, other probe I had. Um, I can't remember the model name of this off the top of my head of this specific tube um, that's in here. But anyway, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, this guy also has a depleted uranium check source on the side. So in the center of this little circle here, um, there's a fleck of depleted uranium that uh, you can use to test and make sure the meter is working properly. Um, this one actually happened to be in good working condition um, when I got it, which is awesome. Um, the voltage was almost correct. Um, the voltage, it was the high voltage it was putting out is supposed to be about 900 volts. Um, in this guy's case, it was uh, 930, but the uh, little pot to uh, adjust the high voltage was so brittle that it cracked a little bit and I stopped trying to adjust the high voltage. Um, but anyway, so you can see the meter face deflecting a little here. But according to the manual, the way you're supposed to make sure this thing is kind of calibrated in terms of counts per minute is um, change it or put it onto the um, times 10 scale. So that way we end up with like one millirunch and two millirunch and three, so on and so forth open the check source window and then place it against the check source like so and we should read between 1.5 and 2.5 millirunctions per hour to know that it's essentially calibrated oops let's see if i can stop moving the probe here yeah so as you can see it's calibrated and working um pretty close on the scale to two right on the line uh, you leave it there long enough it basically does balance out at two for the most part um, 
But anyway, yeah, so it's pretty great. Um, I'll show you a bit of the internals on this guy and kind of explain them. Um, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to hit pause real quick and kind of disassemble it and power it off. Okay. So I have the latches undone, but I also forgot to mention a couple of features. So this cap here, um, there we go, turn it off. Um, this cap here reveals a headphone jack that you can actually use to plug headphones or an external speaker into to hear the clicks. I'm sure you noticed that when I had it testing a source, it was silent. And there are also two lugs for a shoulder carry strap on either side, which is a nice feature. But anyway, so let's open it up. There. Separate the meter itself from the can. As you can see, um, it runs on four D cells. Uh, and these are the principal power source for it. Um, here, the high voltage and um, uh, count calibration potentiometers. Um, as you can see here, the high voltage one cracked a little bit as I was describing earlier. Um, and then you can see like the meter face here. And yeah, it's just kind of a little bit older school, um, you know, circuitry as you'd expect from something that was built in 1961. Um, and yeah. Oh, and your high voltage test points, by the way, if you're ever trying to figure out if the voltages are correct on this thing, are right here. This little, this is where you could put your giga ohm probe on your multimeter um, to get the anode voltage. And then you can basically just touch it anywhere on the um, casing of the unit that's bare metal. But I uh, touched it to the solder point here. I uh, don't know if you can see that. There's a solder point back there just above the transformer. That is the uh, ground coming from the probe. And in the bottom, this one actually has some corrosion from a previous you know, set of batteries that was in it. It's not too bad, um, but does need to be fixed. And you can see that there's actually a circuit diagram in the bottom, which I will be um, um, replacing as well when I, as I go about the process of restoring this guy. But anyway, so I would like to show you guys what it looks like in operation. So I'm going to go get a couple of check sources and we'll uh, show you the response to um, a little bit of radium and uh, the sealed um, cesium-137 sample. Okay, now we're back with the samples out and ready to go. Um, here's the one microcurie of cesium-137 that I'm going to start with. Um, this is a sealed sample made by Spectrum Techniques. Um, and this is exactly the kind of material this Geiger counter is designed to detect. Um, this stuff comes out of um, reactors and nuclear explosions. Um, it's a normal part of the decay chain for most of the fuels we use, or for many of the fuels we use, especially the uranium series. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I will demonstrate the meter detecting this material. So I'm going to set it upside down. Um, I do have the beta window closed. This thing is beta and gamma sensitive. Um, cesium-137 emits both of those things. So I'm just going to do a gamma-only check. And I got the meter set for times 10. You can see it deflecting a bit. That's interesting. So now I'm going to pop open the beta shield. See if I can... I'll have to pause again. Okay, beta shield is now open. So we'll be able to pick up the betas coming off of here as well. And the meter basically goes all the way to the end. So we'll crank up the scale to times 100. So we're yeah, about, yeah, say, 150,000 counts a minute, right? Or, yeah, 15,000 counts a minute, just about. So that's kind of, that's nice. Okay, and we'll do the same thing, only this time with a radium toggle switch um, that came out of an old, I'm guessing, 1950s aircraft that I found. So there's this little, there's a little bit of radium encased in a glass vial at the tip of the toggle switch there. 
So we'll go ahead and set that guy down. Um, and again, this is with the beta shield open, so we'll measure what we get with the beta shield open on the radium sample. Still at times 100. You can actually safely drop that down to times 10 and still get a good reading. There we are. It's becoming a little bit more, uh, that's probably more the range we need to have it in. Yep, so about 2,000 counts a minute. Um, and, uh, well, it says 40 millirontians, but I'm not sure if that's accurate with the beta shield open because it's also, you know, going to be picking up non gammas. So I'm going to go ahead and close the shield again, which means I have to pause. Sorry, guys. All right, and here we are with the beta shield closed, so I'm gonna put the sample right up to it. And this is still on times 10, and you can see that we could actually probably drop down to times one, but you can definitely see that it's uh, picking up some of the gammas from that um, radium-226 decay. But anyway, overall, a really cool and awesome little meter. Um, you know, definitely a part of history. Um, I will be getting a speaker that threads onto here from one of my friends that uh, manufactures them. Um, but yeah, like I'm very excited to add this uh, add this to the uh, collection or fleet or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful piece of history and is in great working order. Um, except that the high voltage is kind of stuck at 30 volts above where it should be, but hey, you know, uh, in the grand scheme of things, that ain't bad. Cheers, guys.